Oh, wonderful. Well then, Wagahai, here's something delicious I bought for you from the cat's meat meat. Wait, what? The cat's meat man. <laughs> the cat's man meat, I almost said. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm too tired. It's late. <laughs> Ooh, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am the Story Driven Gamer, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are hopping back into the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Feels good to be back. I took a, a little break, but I'm back now, feeling better than ever. In the last episode, we concluded uh, the first trial of Chapter 2, and we learned a bit about the uh, scam that Sham Spear was pulling off, specifically regarding the, uh, the gas uh, machine, or gas canister, and the coin. Um, there's a specific coin called, like, a... A three pence piece or a threepenny piece, they called it, a, whatever they were calling it. It's a specific coin they use, you know, for the gas meter to, you know, so you could use gas around the house. And instead of using one of those, since Shamsu is pretty poor, he had to, um, he had to resort to uh, making a coin shaped indent in those bars of soap we found. And he put, he filled them with water put it on the windowsill to freeze, and then he used the frozen, um, you know, ice blocks in the shape of the coin to, um, and, you know, put that in the gas canister. Would that actually work? I don't know, but in this world, it apparently does, and if that's the case, it's pretty ingenious, I, I thought. Especially because then the other aspect of it is then one of the workers from the gas company is supposed to, you know, visit these houses and collect the coins from the machine. So if he was using, like, actual counterfeit coins, they'd probably be pretty easily discovered. At least eventually that they're counterfeit, but because it's ice, it just melted away. The evidence melted away. Um, he could have put maybe a bucket or something under, so if you remember, it left, like, a big puddle when we looked at the picture underneath, but... Say la vie. The other, I guess the other big revelation that that led to was that on the day of the murder, there was something going on with the water and he couldn't get the water wor working or running. So, he didn't have water to use for his scam, so he used the tea that had the poison, which is why when Ryanosuke saw it, the coin initially, or a quote-unquote coin, it was brown, and he thought it was just like a copper coin, but it was the tea, um, you know, frozen. Frozen tea, so that was cool. And then, of course, that led us to believe that, if that's the case, that there might be traces of poison in in the coin because those are still frozen on the windowsill so that's why we had a recess because you know they have to they have to check that out for poison and yeah that's going to bring us to a new investigation day i'm assuming it'll just be one more investigation and one more trial that's probably it for this chapter but yeah it's getting interesting i thought that was, that section was very interesting and intriguing and i'm curious how that'll ultimately tie in together you know, the actual murder, or attempted murder. Um, but anyway, as I said earlier, I, I took some time off, because if, if you watch the, uh, and by some I mean like, like a few extra days. <laughs> it just took me a little bit longer than usual to get my last video uploaded and to record this video. Because if you watch my, um, my finale of, uh, Life is Strange Wavelength, I had said I was just coming down with a cold. I think I just had a sore throat at the time, and, you know, that was it. So, I was able to record... But then naturally, you know, my cold turned into a, you know, an actual co co uh, cold. So, you know, I was a little under the weather. So, especially a game like this where I'm talking nonstop and I have to do voices and stuff. If I have like a sore throat or like a phlegmy throat, that's, that would be, <laughs> that would be rough. So I wanted to wait till I was in ship, ship shape before uh, jumping back into this. I'm feeling a lot better. Um... Actually, while I was on while I was on my uh, tiny little uh, few days off, I noticed that this the last Ace Attorney video was probably my most viewed video, at least for my Amiga channel. You know, I'm not saying it was anything, anything like whoa, but it was, you know, in retrospect, I was thinking back and looking at some of my older videos. I think it is my most viewed video. So, thank you guys, those of you who checked it out, really appreciate it. It, it made me uh, it made me more excited to hop back in. One more thing before we start, I just want to um, let you guys know, as I just alluded to or mentioned, um, I finished Life is Strange Wavelength, which was the other game I was playing alongside this, and now that that's over, I don't have any plans, at least not no immediate plans, to uh, hop into another game, so 
for those of you who are watching this series and are, are enjoying it, you're going to get more of it more frequently. So that's that's good. <laughs> I think cause that's kind of the format I like, especially a game like this. Because, you know, because it's so interesting and you don't want to forget, you know, you don't want to forget things as you go. The longer, you know, obviously the longer between recordings, the more easily it is to forget, you know, the little details and stuff the next time you turn it on. So it'll be more fun for me to play it that way. And I just, I like sticking to one game at a time. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. So we're going to hop in now to the next investigation. Okay, we're starting in the office or the attic. 22nd of February, 1.11 p.m., Narahodo's Legal Consultancy. Suzudo, I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. Phew, we made it back in one piece. Just... To be perfectly honest, I thought we were finished there for a while. When are, when don't you feel like that? <laughs> I feel like every single case we um just barely scrape by. Oh, I know. What a lot of close shaves. <laughs> exactly my... My point. There are so many carriages on the streets of London. You were very nearly flattened several times. I mean, like, almost utterly destroyed. Oh, no. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean literally. I know. I was talking figuratively. <laughs> Teehee. Yes, I know. I think we're on the same page. It was a marvelous defense now, hodo -san. It really was. I was in awe of you. Oh, um... Thank you, I guess. You should be. And now that your fervent exploits have won us some more precious investigation time... Huzzah! Let's see if we can't find some new clues for court tomorrow! Let's do this, boy! Yes, let's do that. Is everything alright? I suppose. I still can't quite believe it. That's all. That I'm here in England working as a lawyer, I mean? In the old Bailey, no less. Why do you always say it like that? Don't ask. Don't, don't, don't ask. Stare. The truth is, it shouldn't be me, should it? It should be him standing in my shoes. Kazuma. Kazuma Kiryu. No, not not that Kazuma. It should be Kazuma. It was Kazuma-sama's wish that you follow him to Great Britain and work alongside him. Yes, I mean, I never had the chance to ask him exactly why, but he clearly had a plan. And he's, whatever this bigger picture thing is going on with all the government stuff behind the scenes, he was part of it. We haven't really gotten into that yet in this game. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. And you're doing wonderfully, naruhoto san I have no doubt that cosmo san would say exactly the same if he were here with us. Yeah. Uh, she has such a warm smile. Almost motherly. Thank you, suzuto san Thank you. Cool beans. Should we just examine everything first? It says I did this, but I'm going to try it again anyway. Okay, now it's, it's letting me just go through it. <clears throat> I'm making sure I don't miss... I leave no stone unturned. There doesn't appear to be a whole lot to examine. Okay. I do like that, you know, it shows that things I examined last time, if the dialogue's gonna be the same. This was a funny conversation. Yeah, every everything I was able to examine in the last episode, or sorry, the last investigation, at least up here, is still check marked. Okay. Then let's just talk. Let's talk about the trial first. It was quite a shock earlier today, wasn't it? When the victim himself turned up in court and took the stand? Yeah, that happened a lot sooner than I thought it would. I know. Not only that, but then finding out that he is exact- He is actually a bare-faced gas thief as well. Yes, that was certainly a surprise to us all. <laughs> For a while, it seemed as though everyone had quite forgotten about Sozuki-san poisoning the tea. Careful of your phrasing, suzuto san He didn't do it, I don't think. He didn't poison anything. And there's more to this Mr. Sham Spear than we yet know, I'm sure of it. Yeah, he doesn't seem like an upstanding gent. 
Mr. Shamspear certainly wasn't the noble, <laughs> upstanding man everyone thought he was at first. Exactly, Suzuto. We are the same person. What's become of him, actually? Oh, what's become of him, actually? I was told that he'd be returning to the hospital ward where he was receiving treatment. Oh. Which one is that? Probably the same one Miss Green's at, right? That'd be my guess. Let me see... Ah, yes. He's at St. Bartholomew's, or Bart's, as Londoners call it. Is that a different hospital? We know that place, don't we? Yes, we visit. Okay, I was right. Yes, we visited Miss Green there yesterday. It's the same hospital to which she was taken. Ah, uh, yes. After Sozuki san stabbed her in the back. I, I mean, allegedly. <laughs> Do be careful if you're phrasing Naruhoto san. He didn't stab anyone, I don't think. Perhaps we both owe Suzuki san an apology. Nah, he's not here. St. Bartholomew's. Yes, we should probably visit the hospital later. Okay. Kazuma's wishes. Kazuma Asagi, the best friend I ever had, and a lawyer with such promise. He really saved my bacon in that horrible incident just before we left Japan. Ah, the memories. It felt like so long ago. There he is. I can still picture him now, looking so fierce and determined in court. <laughs> I think this exact p picture is, I used that for my very first thumbnail for the first uh, game. The first, uh, episode of the first game, rather. Like, literally, this exact picture, that's funny. And then after the trial, the crazy idea he came up with. As a stowaway? Yes, you can fit inside my trunk if you call it small enough, I'm sure. No one will know. I think I gave him a similar voice that I gave, uh... What's his face, uh, Van Zykes. Cosmo, won't you tell me why? Why go to these lengths so that I can accompany you to Great Britain? Well, it's been on my mind ever since we got through that trial. Look at my headband blowing in the wind. I'm so cool. That you really ought to go into law. Be a defense lawyer. Well, actually, I think it was, I think it was the Van Zyke voice, but, you know, I didn't have the British accent so much. Because he's not British. You've got a natural talent for it. Believe me, I guarantee it. I've never even thought about becoming a lawyer. Suck up, boy. Well, I can't force you, obviously. You'll have to decide for yourself. But anyway, London is the cultural capital of the world. The city at the forefront of everything. It can't hurt to see... Can't... Sorry. It can't hurt for you to see it with your own eyes. No, that's true. I suppose, though... If you were to become a lawyer... Then one day... One day what? Oh no. Never mind. Haha. -ha. I'll have plenty of time to tell you later- Dead. <laughs> whatever, whatever, Kazuma. Naruhoto-san. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about Kazuma. Yes. He's forever in my thoughts, too. To change the Japanese judicial system for the better. That was his dream. Well, now it's my dream. And that's why he so desperately wanted to become the Great Britain to study, of course. Yes, that's right. But... Yes? I do wonder if his true intentions lay elsewhere sometimes. I don't know, the thought just takes hold of me every now and then, that's all. Like he had some other motive. It seems likely. His true intentions. Naruhoto-san, what do you mean by Kazuma-sama's true intentions? Ah, oh, look at that! I mean this! Die, Suzuto! Ah! So that's kidding. His katana! I never expected to inherit the sword after Kazuma passed away, of course. No, I know. It was because I asked you to take it. When I have it at my side in court, I feel as though... I can cut anyone down. It gives me courage. Yes. Actually, the night before he died, he told me a little about the sword. I pulled the sword out of a stone, and then a wizard showed up. Oh, sorry, wrong story. Kar Karma? Oh, that's, the, that's what it's called, right? That's... <laughs> 
That was a long shot. What is that, Cephalos sword, sword or something? That's right, it's a prized sword that's been passed down through generations of the Asagi clan. Huzzah. He's so cool looking. For that reason alone, it's sad, it's sad that he died. A Japanese man's sword is his soul, Rienosuke. I can't be parted from my katana. Karama guides me. I, tr I truly believe that. I'm just, I'm just picturing that, um, that Cosmo has like a fan just off screen at all times. That's causing, <laughs> that's causing his, uh, I need to make sure he's standing in front of it at all times. So its name compels its wielder to slice evil in two. Not that you would need much compelling. Haha, <laughs> good one. On that subject, there's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. Something you have to do? Yes. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Of, of, of course I will, I guess. Whatever it is, I'll see you through to the end with you. I will kill whoever I need to kill. I will do whatever I need to do for you, my liege. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I knew you wouldn't let me down. What did he mean by something very important that I have to do? I feel like that's what we're going to find out. I had hoped that the answer to that question would become apparent when we arrived here, but... As yet, I've not found a single clue. I see. So what's next, Suzuno? So... You know that sozuki san took tea to the victim in the night in question, on the night in question. But as he isn't the culprit, then obviously... Yes, the poison surely wasn't in the tea. But if that's the case... How on earth did the poison get into Mr. Shamspear's body? The only other thing I can think of... Because it crossed my mind, I think I might have mentioned it in one of the other videos, I don't remember. Is there a chance that there was poison in the gas? Maybe he, um, maybe he, like, put on the gas and... I mean, but the gas, it's not like the ga gas would, like, leak into the room, unless... Unless there's, like, a gas leak or something. I don't know. I'm sure we'll find a clue at the scene. There must be something in Mr. Shamsfield's room that will help solve the mystery. Well, naturally, Scotland Yard detectives have been all over the place already. But it couldn't hurt for us to have another look around, I think. Definitely! Let's do this! And I'm desperate to know the outcome of the investigation into the tea le into the tea left in the bar of soap. Well, if we wanted to inspect the Gregson, we could ask him about that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna have to wait till the the following day's trial to learn about uh, the poison, whether it was in the uh, in the bar of soap or not, or if they'll get back to us during the investigation. Okay? I don't know if there's anything I really need to show you. I don't know if I want to necessarily go through every piece of evidence and show Suzuto if, uh... Unless you put coins in this meter, of course, it won't give you any gas. The British have some really chilling inventions, don't they? <laughs> Sorry? Well, you could die on a cold winter's night if you weren't able to light your stove. I suppose in a way, one little coin could be the difference between life and death. Personally, I'd break the meter and find a way to light the stove somehow. You're a criminal. Oh no, the meter might explode if you were to tamper with it, Naruhoto-san. I tested it myself. The gas companies have it all buttoned up, don't they? <laughs> Suzu-san, what do you make of this? I don't care, Naruhoto. Oh dear. What indeed? Let me see. She just rips it in half. If you don't know, really, it's fine to say so. I won't hold it against you. Suzuto san, what do you make of this? Ah, yes, the soap that we found on the ledge outside Mr. Shamspear's blocked up window. Since we discovered him poisoned, I've been scared to wash my hands. I keep thinking the foul soap is going to be the end of me. <laughs> well, the soap's bad name was cleared in the end, wasn't it? That's true, he did not eat it, as far as we know. I suppose so. But I'm still worried about it. I think it would be safer just to never wash my hands again. Starting now. I think you haven't thought that through. You will wash your hands now, Hodosan. 
You will. If I have anything to say about it. Okay, okay. Sheesh. That's it. Let us leave. I guess we'll just go to show them to the suite first. Twenty second of Febru February. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Shorms is sweet. Oh, Runo and Susie, hooray! You're back. Ah, Iris. Hello, Iris. You're in fine spirits as always, I see. I am, and you look as immaculately presented as ever, Susie. Oh, you flatter me. Well, you couldn't have come at a better time. I've just made a pot of tea. I'll set some cups. Really? Thanks, Iris. But actually... What is that foul smell? It is I! Silent but deadly. Aha! The wanderers return at last! Where on earth have the pair of you been? Um... We've been in court? Oh, from Mr. Mustache's case! That was today, was it? Haha! -ha. I forgot all about that. I'm sure I mentioned it only yesterday, Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure you think you did. <laughs> Anywho, well, we can laugh about it now. Sure. So tell me, how did the trial go? Reasonably well so far. We managed to escape without a guilty verdict, at least. Really? I would have liked to see it. Then you should have been there. And I must pass the time of day with Mr. Reaper again. It's been too long. I'm hoping we learn about that as well. You know, more specifically, how he became the Reaper of the Bailey. I mean, we know the origins of that. But, specifically, how like how that came to be. That's this curse. Superstition. Is Lord Van Zyke's an acquaintance, Mr. Sholmes? Naturally. There's not a person in the world who doesn't know my name, Mr. Narihoto. <laughs> not quite what I asked, but still. I meant on a more personal level. Not just has he heard of you. Mr. Sholmes, whatever is that odor, you reek. Yes, what is it? It's faint, but absolutely awful. Ah, indeed. That's the center of victory, my dear fellows. Victory in science. Okay. Oh, dear. I don't want to know. All right, I'll bite. What's he up to now? Okay, so, again, I like that everything has a check next to it, if it's going to be repeated dialogue, which it looks like most of this is. Even Iris, if I click on her, it looks like it'll be repeated. The only thing I'm going to repeat is this, because I want to make sure I don't miss this, the, the blackboard stuff. Uh, Mr. Sholmes is about this. Dull. Sorry? If you will produce such dull items with such a dull countenance, you must expect a dull response. Or at the, at the very least, you can do something about your face, my dear fellow. I crave visual stimulation. Uh, That's nice. Something like this. Cheese! I'm, I'm picturing uh, Ryanosuke doing like that swear that swear face from Kingdom Hearts when he first meets Donald and Goofy. Indeed, that is quite the stimulation I desired. Good work. Okay. So that's his I have nothing to say uh, conversation. I'm just going to go through this like I do with Suzido. I believe you tried to eat some soap once, didn't you? Not my proudest moment. True, yes, I had a theory that it may cleanse the inside of my digestive system, you see? And how'd it go? Was it particularly dirty, do you think? Indeed, it was. For I had mistaken, mistakenly imbibed some ink at the time, assuming it to be coffee. Aha! Uh -huh. I must cleanse that once, I thought to myself. Quite logically, of course. Only you could have an anecdote about swallowing soap. <laughs> Ah yes, the crockery of the failed thespian and the mustachioed bookworm. His name is Mr. Sozuki Natsume. You really should try to remember it. Nah, I don't care. You're right. After all, I've entrapped the man twice now. Yes, the deeply malicious bookworm has a deeply malicious mustache. Uh, that he does. 
Oh dear, I'm not sure sure about that. A deeply misfortunate mustache, perhaps. <laughs> that too, the mustache is indeed misfortunate. But only because it is malicious. Poor guy. Oh, what wonderful reasoning, Mr. Sholmes. Brava, brava! You've won me over yet again. Is that all it takes, Uzido? Is that all it takes? Okay, that appears to be it. So let's just try talking to him. Uh, let's talk about that foul smell, I guess. So, what is that indescribably foul smell? Ah, well, most probably this, I would say. Uh, some kind of vial. <laughs> Looks kind of like a test tube. There's some kind of liquid in it. What is that? My dear fellow, it is, of course, my latest invention. A chemical test that can identify whether or not a tea is genuine at the drop of some tea. Oh my! Does that have anything to do with, uh, the poison test? There are some unscrupulous short sorts manning the stalls along some of London's less frequented streets. They regularly sell what purports to be high quality tea, but is in fact merely dyed leaves of drab flavor. Well, that, well, that's certainly unsavory behavior. Time well spent. So, when one is presented with what appears to be black tea, one must be careful. Iris? I'm busy. At the ready, Hurley. Let's just add a drop of my chemical to this cup of tea here. Do you see what happens? It turned black. It turned completely black. Is this going to be a new mechanic we get to use? And what a foul odor it's giving off. Indeed, the blacker the tea becomes, the more foul the odor. The better the tea is. Interesting. It would appear that this cup was a particularly fine Darjeeling. That's very ingenious. <laughs> but what do you do with that black liquid now? Surely you can't drink it. Why well, dispose of it naturally? Surely you wouldn't like to drink it, would you? Uh, doesn't that defeat the purpose? There does seem to be a rather obvious problem with your new invention, Mr. Sholmes. Would it work if you just like put like a drop or like a, a small bit in like a separate container? You know, like in a separate cup, just to test it, and then you drink the rest. Or do you have to like, you have to like dip it into the full sample? Hence why this chemical test is merely a test, my dear madam. Right, you do that. You do you, Mr. Sholmes. The point is, we are entering a new era of science. In the world of criminal investigation also. Yes, forensic science. This new fangled technology. Oh, these are such exciting times. I regularly engage in the scientific experimentation alongside my unofficial consulting detective work. The Herlock Sholmes method will be the foundation upon which modern investigative technique is based. You are based. <laughs> this little tea incident was a happy byproduct of my ongoing forensic science research. Forensic science? I suppose I should find out more about this forensic science. <laughs> Do tell me more, Mr. Sholmes. So, your tea test... Is that an example of forensic science? Indeed it is. An essential tool in cases that hinge on the knowledge of whether some tea is of high or inferior quality. Not a huge number of cases then. <laughs> Indeed. Perhaps a more practical example is required. Fingerprints. Yes. Not yet accepted in our courts as evidence, I might add. Really, we are dragging our heels there. I haven't even heard of them until recently. What are fingerprints? Which is partly why I undertake research in this field myself, of course. Does that mean you're studying fingerprints, Mr. Sholmes? Study mine! I'll give you my hand. There are others in that field already, and I abhor the company of inferior minds. Because I'm such a genius. No, what I'm researching is skin prints. Uh, what? Skin prints? A nomenclature of my own design, as is this chemical agent that makes it possible. It instantly reveals objects touched by, touched by whatever person is under investigation. Brilliant, Mr. Sholmes. 
You're so great. As long as it doesn't turn everything completely odorous and black. Yeah, let's not have that happen again. I assure you, my dear fellows, you will witness my forensic talents in action very soon indeed. Okay, let us turn our attention back to Lord Van Zykes. Lord Badek Van Zykes. Yes, it's an interesting, uh, sobriquet he has, isn't it? The Reaper the Bailey. Once the legendary prosecutor is fought for someone's conviction, that person is doomed. Even if he or she is found not guilty by the court sooner or later, the hapless soul will vanish from the capital. But vanish how exactly? By falling under a passing carriage or drowning in the Thames. Or succumbing to a sudden fever. Or quite out of the blue being set upon by a highwayman. There are numerous routes to one's final terminus, my dear fellow. It all seems a little far-fetched, really. Yeah, really, there's gotta be some explanation. Well, on the right side, Mr. Mustache is fighting fit. For the time being, at least. I mean, I wonder if he's, like, causing these accidents. Like, if he's doling out some kind of vigilante justice on the side. That's not overly reassuring. If the rumors are true, though, the obvious conclusion would surely be that those acquitted are, well... By Lord Van Zyke's own hand. Uh, yep. As it happened, Miss Suzato, that is quite impossible. Oh? Why? Naturally, the man very quickly became under such suspicion. However, whenever those incidents occurred, the Reaper always had a cast iron alibi. R really? And so his reign continued, but five years ago, he vanished from the courts. Never to appear as a prosecutor again. That is until you arrived in the country, Mr. Narihoto. Yes, so I've heard. There's gotta be a reason for that. In fact, it was the very day I arrived when I was thrust into that trial at the Old Bailey. That bitter fight to the death co coincided with the Reaper's resurrection. And really did end bitterly indeed. And here you are, facing Mr. Reaper again. Poor Runo, I don't know if you're just incredibly unlucky or incredibly unlikable. It's the first one. I think I'm awesome. I, I think it goes deeper than just me. I sense a general loathing. Yeah, of all Japanese people. That's what. I that's the sense I get. With Mr. Natsume, who I'm currently defending, being Japanese as well as Ms. Suzuto and myself, I felt it even more keenly in court today. For some reason, Lloyd Van Zyke seems to have an inherent disdain of the Japanese. Indeed. It is an interesting observation. Do you know something about it? Do you, Mr. Sholmes? Tell us! Is he going to? Nah. Oh. It was about ten years ago that Beric von Zykes chose to enter the legal profession. However, before that time, the young man's closest companion hailed from the Empire of Japan. No! What the? Tell us more, Mr. Sholmes. Now! What happened? I, I believe I made it clear before. I'm unable to tell you anything about the affair. Aw, oh, come on. Don't leave us with that little tidbit. Oh, but... You tease. This is exactly what I wanted, though. I feel like we're gonna learn a lot about uh, Van Zykes in this game. The veil will be lifted on the events in the, of the past in due course, I, I have no doubt. Because that's how these games work. For now, however, it is Mr. Mustache who is most deserving of your attention, I believe. I guess. Screw him. <laughs> well, I think we should go back to the scene and see if we can uncover any new clues. That's the spirit, Runo. See you later. Yes, until later. No, 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 Mr. Sean, we were thinking you'd come with us. You were? Why would I do that? 
Yes, of course. You said so just a moment ago. You said we'd, wi we'd witness your forensic talents in action. Oh yes, I did, did I? Didn't I? Oh yes, I do recall saying something along those lines. But you go on ahead. I shall be here to follow you later. In all likelihood. Probably. Maybe. Well, I might. We'll see. Your commitment astounds me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Sholmes. You're so generous. We'll eagerly await your arrival. Bye-bye, Runo. Bye-bye, Susie. Okay. What do you have to say? Mr. Sholm seems to be making funny faces at something on his desk. I thought he said he was going to come with us to Mr. Shamspear's room. No doubt he's preparing something, Mr. Narahoto. Leave him alone! Something amazing! Yeah. Right. And he's doing it whilst asleep! Do his talents know no bounds? Is there no limit to this man's talents? <laughs> Susano, we need to have a little talk about your fandom. The question is, where to go first? We have lots of options. I feel like going to Briar Road and the Garrida, just because I feel like that's... Star was kind of the least important to work my way up, if that makes sense. I mean, I don't know what's more important than the rest. I'll save Natsumi for last, so I'll do Viro, Garrett's room, and then I'll do the hospital rooms. Twenty second of February, Viro Road. Oh, okay. So already, this all appears to be the same. Okay. What a waste of time. Next. Twenty second of February. Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's room. I don't even think they were part of the trial, were they? Or she he rather. Obviously Mrs. Garadev is uh I believe she's in prison. Mr. Garadev appears to be out. Hmm, oh well. I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. Oh, now all the, uh... All the stuff in his room is different, because he's not here to interject his commentary. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. We probably shouldn't poke around in here whilst Mr. Garadev is out. Oh, okay. Okay, fair enough. I'm kind of happy about that, to be honest. Okay, yeah, let's go to, uh... Let's go to Miss Green and then Mr. Shamspear. Rat! St. Bartholomew's Hospital. Recovery Ward. What do you suppose is happening? It sounds like some sort of disturbance in the force. Yes, I hear angry voices. Oh, look who it is. Be not angry, or ample lady. Verily, thou art mistaken. Mistaken my foot. You were looking. What voice did I give her? Dang it. At one point I tried to give her like a kind of like a... I don't know, like almost like a... Kind of manly like voice, but... I don't know. Mistaken my foot. You were looking. You were looking at my painting. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. "'Twas foul indeed, the poison that moustached villain gaveth me. Forgive me, lady. I wish that you died from that poison. Oh, jeez. God of mercy, ample lady, but thou seest I have vigor still. Behold my Shamspear dance. Huzzah! Look at me. I'm a pretty little flower, aren't I? <laughs> what the heck is wrong with him? This looks rather ominous, doesn't it? I'm uncomfortable. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes? I lo, tis the lawyer from the land whence riseth the sun. How now? Um, what are you doing here, Mr. Shamspear? 
Mary, I do believe I'm returned unto another ward. Who was looking? That's what he was doing. Looking at my terrible work. Eastern fellow, so dark, dark ye clad. Faith, thy work in court this morning was wonderful. I do applaud thee. Oh, well. Thank you. Oh, dang it. But! But! That doesn't mean things will go so wonderfully for you tomorrow, does it? Uh. Okay, showing us true colors now. Do forgive me. Aha! Look at me. A non exempt. Okay, there's definitely a twisted side to him. I don't know what you just said, but goodbye. It's a sham I might technically be the victim in this case. But there's definitely a lot more to it than that. It's very hard to pin the man down. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if like he planned something to maybe make Natsume take the fall or something. I don't know. He did survive after all. I'm so sorry. I'm such an awful person. Ah, Miss Green. Is everything alright? Oh yes. I mean, don't worry about me. They're about to discharge me, so I must get ready to leave now. Oh, I see. We're delighted that you'll soon be well enough to go home, Miss Green. Oh dear, you're too kind. I, I don't deserve it. Okay. Oh, so I can't even, uh... Okay. So once again... I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but the trophy, there's a trophy in this game for examining a bottle of some sort. I still don't see it. Maybe she does end up going home and we, uh, the bottle's there. Like, maybe we get to visit her house. But I think the trophy is, like, examine a bottle on the table before Miss Green breaks it or something. But I definitely don't see anything like that at the moment. And... She did just say she's being discharged, so maybe we'll visit her at home or something. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything. And everything else is, uh... Whatchamacallit. Everything else is this, as it should be. Okay. And then we can't just talk to her normally. We have to click on her. So, are you feeling more like yourself today, Miss Green? I am. Thank you. I mean, people do recover from ordeals like this, don't they? Even people like me. Well, yes. It really was an ordeal, wasn't it? <laughs> you survived the stabbing. As far as I was concerned, I was just walking along in the snow one evening, minding my own business. And then completely out of the blue, I was struck in the back by a knife and collapsed unconscious for days. Of course, when I finally woke up again yesterday, the whole business had been cleared up already. What a terrible week it's been for you, yeah, I'll say. Oh no, I'm sure I'm very lucky, really. I'll look back on this fondly. Uh, you will? Really? <laughs> That's weird. Anyway, I must be getting my things together now, so I'm ready to be discharged. Oh yes, of course. Sorry to take up your time when you're obviously busy. So if I go to Mr. Shamspear's room, is he gonna be there? Oh, by his room they meant... That makes sense. I was thinking I was thinking they were talking about his hospital room, but that makes more sense. Mr. Natsume's lodgings, ground floor. Oh, hello again, Inspector Gregson. Ah, I do love me some fish and chips. What are you doing here? Um, well, we're hoping to have another look around, actually. The lawyer representing the defendant has a right to examine the scene, as I'm sure you're aware. Yeah, I know the school. Oh. Yes, one other thing. One more thing! The soap on the ledge outside the window, did you find it? With the tea in it? Yeah, we found it alright. And there was a small amount of tea in it, as you said. I knew it! 
entered the identification section of the yard now. They are looking into it. The results will be available later today. That's wonderful news. Thank you. Pretty impressive performance in court this morning. Sorry? Nothing. Forget it. Just make sure you don't disturb anything in here. Duly noted. Oh, jeez. I wonder who that could be. Okay, before talking to anyone specific, I'll just go examine... Let's examine the window. The sun never shines in this room thanks to that depressing, bricked-up window. Yeah, with enough determination, you can always remove the bricks to set some soap outside, can't you? That sounds like a very wise life lesson, Miss Suzuto. And we literally just saw that happen. <laughs> Only if you plan to follow a life of crime, Mr. Naruhoto, shape up. Duly noted. Here's the soap again. So it turns out that Mr. Shamfear wasn't eating the soap at all. Go figure. That's right, the mystery of why he had it on a plate whilst holding a fork in his hand is solved. Yes, deprives his latest ice coin out of its mold. And in the process, he accidentally broke the bar of soap in two. What a clumsy little bugger. It certainly was hard to imagine, let alone deduce. Okay, here's the cups. Ah, the ill-fated teacup from which the two men drank on the ill-fated night. That's so poetic, Mr. Narahodo. During their heated literary debate, yes. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. Who's stronger, Romeo or Juliet? It sounded like it was quite a discussion. Now I think of it, I'm sure that the two lovers in the play ended their lives with poison. That they did. That's a good... That's a good pickup. That's fixing, Miss Suzuto. Let's hope it stays that way. Okay. Let's look at the gas. Gas meter. If you ran out of change, you wouldn't even have any light, let alone heat. For the needy, London's winters can be very harsh. I'd say. That's true. But if you think about it... Even the wealthy would find themselves freezing if they ran out of small change. London's, winter, London's winters can be very harsh for the forgetful too, then. Frankly, I'm starting to wonder if Susan san and I are going to make it to spring. We shall see. That's true. We don't even have a meter at Baker Street, let alone a gas stove. That's a problem. Look how dark the stain on the floor is underneath the meter there. How did we miss that? Yes, from all the water dripping out after the ice coins melted. As you established in court this morning. It's a very large and obvious stain, isn't it? Mr. Shamsphere must have used an awful lot of ice coins, I suppose. It was an ingenious idea, I'll give him that. My thoughts exactly. I thought it was quite smart. Okay. This is underwear. His bloomers. I don't know who to talk to first. I guess I'll talk to Gregson and then see what Sholmes is doing. Are you looking for new clues, Inspector? Oh, Lord Van Zyke's orders, yeah. Don't come back till you've got something for me, he says. Tch. Oh dear. Poor you. Your life must suck. Yeah, poor me. Because we've already uh, searched every bleeding nook and cranny in this place. Just like Edgeworth, I don't know what he expects, to be honest. Thank goodness for warm chips is what I can say. Fish and chips. Well, at least he's honest. <laughs> okay. What are you doing over there, Mr. Sholmes? Are you going to show us your, investi your forensic investigative prowess? Mr. Sholmes, what are you up to over there? My, t my time has come. What a question indeed. Was it not your good self who asked me to attend the scene? Oi! What are you doing here, Sholmes? What are you up to over there? What are you doing here? Dear me, what a great detective! One is always under scrutiny, it seems. Is now the time, Mr. Sholmes? It is indeed. Are you about to show us your forensic talents in action as you promised? Nah. <laughs> I'm good. 
With the greatest pleasure, my dear madam. Let's do this. They're building it up. So let's see what it's all about. Um, what's all this? Oh, this is precisely what you requested, Mr. Narihodo. Prepare to die. Hillock Shorms is sens sensational. Skin Prince Seeker Gun. A moment ago, I took a sample from the teacup that was used by the victim. I just remembered, in the last game we had that, um... We had that little, uh, feature with the blood, right? Where the certain people's blood came up different colors. And we were able to, like, match it. So maybe they won't have that mechanic in this game. Maybe this is, like, a new mechanic. Using science, or forensic science. A sample from Mr. Shamfir's cup. Each individual leaves microscopic secretions on everything he or she touches. A sample of the secretions is all I need to produce this. A refined indicator solution. My liberally spraying the room with this chemical. Everything the victim touches is instantly revealed with the aid of these goggles. Here, try them on. Don't mind if I do. Ooh, very bluey. There, now spray the chemical indicator about and all will be revealed. Spray? How how do I do that exactly? A little press of the, X, of the X button on the area you're interested in is all that's required. Like this. Mr. Narihodo, what's an X button? I, I don't I don't know. Just play along. Oh, well, what is that stuff? It's like fog. A suspension of the chemical indicator and a pressurized gas. It's the most efficient way to cover a large area. That was another invention I discovered I, I discovered incidentally whilst I was developing this idea. As you do. <laughs> Go ahead, try it, my dear fellow. We may learn something interesting about the victim's movements on the night in question. Well, there's nothing to lose, I suppose. Let's explore. Yeah, I guess the teacups themselves. Okay, oh wow. I got the gas meter itself. Oh, look at that. Look, there are dozens of handprints here for some reason. So there are, a great many indeed. So much so that it's hard to make out any individual print, in fact. Brr, it sends a chill down my spine. Perhaps he was leaning against the wall while he had while he admired this picture? Unlikely, I would say. It's a rather dull scene after all. Yeah, really. <laughs> and without wishing to state the obvious, you wouldn't generally admire a picture from such close quarters, I feel. True. Oh, very true, Miss Suzano. It's a bit of a mystery, then. Is there some kind of secret passage? What do we got over here? I don't know what I'm looking for to be it. Of the soap itself, I uh... Hmm, what else is there? I did that. The chair? Did I do the chair itself? I did the gas canister. What's this on the floor? Never mind. Nothing important, it seems. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, I already, I already did this. I'm, I'm lost. I don't know. Yeah, I can't exit. So I can't exit out of this, so... There's gotta be something else I gotta find. I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Nohoto. There's a handprint there. Yeah, what's down here? Yeah, I don't wanna click on that again. I'm at a loss. Ugh, I'm, like, scanning every inch of this place. I'm trying to scan like around the area. I see handprints down here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm missing. I really don't. I really, really, really don't. I'm literally about to. I'm just, like. I'm going. I'm going mad. Like I just don't. I 
And again, I can't exit or anything. Like, this is... Yeah, I checked that already. Yeah, I know. How have we not run out of this stuff yet? Guys, I don't know what I'm missing. I really don't. I've, I've sprayed everything. And I mean everything, like... I'm trying to do every inch of the floor, the stairs here. Goodness gracious. Good gosh, what is going on? I don't understand. Like, is it just me? Like, stuff like this just gets me absolutely frustrated. I'm scanning every inch of this room. Okay, I need to calm down. Just gotta just... Eventually, I gotta stumble upon it. Like, like I keep saying, it won't let me back out, so it's not like I found what I needed to find and need to back out now. Like, what? Like, what could this have to do with? This, uh... These handprints on the wall. Like, is that is that in its in and of itself a clue? There's clearly something I'm just not getting. I keep clicking on that over and over again. I am at a loss. I don't know what to do. I'm losing. There we go! I just, a random spot on the floor, okay. Oh, look at all this here! I almost find it hard to believe I didn't scan that spot with, with how much I was going. Ah, oh, yes, interesting! A multitude of the victim's handprints! Why are there so many of them on the floor in this one spot? Oh, perhaps he had a bad fall just here? There's nothing obvious that he would have tripped over, though, is there? Maybe if he took the poison, he would have fallen. Hmm, I wonder. Personally, I often stumble when there's nothing obvious to trip over. Ha <laughs> ha. I think that's something only a great detective would do, Mr. Sholmes. Or a bumbling idiot. <laughs> well, this is quite a puzzle. Handprints all over the floor. What took you so long to find that, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, there's no obvious explanation. Please tell me that's it. There we go. <laughs> Can you imagine if there was more? I'm gonna have to like watch that back and like like zo zone in on that spot and see if I really just skipped over it that entire time. Well, we sprayed Mr. Sholmes' amazing skin for an indicator all over this room, didn't we? And it took me forever. <laughs> We're never using that again. We did. But there are two places in particular that are of interest, I would say. Okay, there's even a little gap there. The handprint's on the floor there and on the wall by the picture, you mean? Yes, and I think the floor warrants closer investigation. I won't be a moment. Do do do. Ah! What is it, Miss Suzuto? I found a skeleton under there. Look here, Mr. Narahodo. One of the floorboards has popped out. I might have been able to see that if, uh, if, uh, the whole crime scene wasn't covered in blue. One of the... You mean... It's a secret hiding place? 
Excellent work, Miss Yuzato. So, what do we have in here? Oi, what are you lot doing? Inspector Gregson, stand aside right this minute. It's my job to investigate there. Is it now? I'm, I'm hungry. No need, Inspector. You continue to dig into your portion of chips whilst we dig around under the floor here. You're a fancy talk putting me off my food anyway. Oh, wait, sorry. You're a fancy talk putting me off my food anyway, Sholmes. I knew a bit of evidence is exactly what I need. It's on. Ha! Huh. Ha! Got here first. Wow, a secret hiding place under the floor. What a find. It's not a hiding place you can make use of in Japan. I don't think I could lift a straw at the Tommy mat. No, I know. I never expected one of these wooden floorboards to move either. It's got me wondering about the wall over there, too. Aren't you curious? How very curious. Oh! I'll investigate at once! Huzzah! Do 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 What a horrible picture. There's nothing behind the picture, sadly. Only the wall. Hmm, how disappointing. What a failure you are, Miss Suzato. JK. So then how do you explain the handprints? I really can't think why anyone would have been touching the wall over and over in one place like that. Click. Where? There you are. A print for you. Okay, handprints on the wall. Traces of handprints on the wall discovered using the skin print seeker gun. There are multiple prints on either side of a hanging picture. Oh, thank you very much. His inventor can make prints too. Now then. I wonder if Inspector Gregson has found anything under the floor there. I'm desperate to know. So am I. Let's beat the truth out of him. Or we could ask him. That works too. Okay, yeah, there's probably nothing else to examine. Let's just talk to him. What do you got for us, Greg Z boy? I'd love to know if there's anything hidden underneath that floorboard there. Allow me to ask Gregson now. After all, we're well acquainted. He loves me. Hey, Inspector Gregson. Really, it's been too long. I love the hat. What is it, Sholmes? I thought perhaps you might show what we found there. Seeing as we're such good friends. And lovers. We're not friends. No, I suppose not. Sholmes is sad now. I did more failure. Yes, I heard. Oh, I'd kill to know what was under that floorboard. Okay. Go with plan B. Let's murder him. What is it? Alright then. Fair is fair. What? You did discover the hiding place after all. I suppose I should at least fill you in. Really, Inspector? Thank you. Do it quickly, my dear fellow. If there's one thing I know about this man, it's that he blows with the wind. As fickle as the weather. Don't, don't insult him. Oh, he stopped making me out to be some kind of nut. There were three items under the floor there. A newspaper clipping, a photographic print, and a tin box. Now, what do you want to know? Uh, I guess I'll just go in order. Looks like this was cut out of the paper about three months ago. It's about a convict who got sick and died while he was serving time in Manchester. How terrible. It made the headlines down there in London as well. The bloke had been sentenced to death, you see. But nature got him first. Oh my goodness. He committed a capital offense? I hope we get to read that. Man by the name of Selden. Nasty piece of work into the burglaries and murder. They say the hoard he'd knocked off was worth about a thousand pounds. A hoard? Of treasure, you mean? Or zombies? Jewelry and the like. But he'd be... But he'd hidden it somewhere, and no one knows where. And now he's dead. The papers loved it, of course. A thousand pounds lost down en route to hell. Or some such headline. Does it not strike you, though? 
Why such an article would be so carefully ensconced under the floor? That is the question. No idea. I suppose now you mention it, it does seem a bit odd. Perhaps I'll go over the paperwork we've got on Selden back at the yard and see if I can turn up anything. Capital Offender Article, a newspaper article about Selden. A criminal sentenced to receive the death penalty. However, he died of illness in prison whilst his loot remained undiscovered. Died of illness? Could he have been poisoned himself? I don't know. I have I see no connection yet. Okay. Can I look at it now? I want to take a closer look. Oh yeah, we have this as well. There's something, there's something in the little pillar there. Oh, it's just nails. Yeah, nothing, nothing stands out at me yet. Okay, anyway. Okay, condemned crim criminal dies of natural causes in prison. Manchester's Strange Ways Prison announced the death of convicted murderer and burglar Selden by natural causes. In the early hours this morning, he had been suffering with fever since the end of October. Altered by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. So I have a feeling maybe Shamspear knows this guy personally. I don't think, uh... Again, I'm just thinking. We don't know. We don't know nearly enough, but I'm wondering if, like, shall if I uh, could Shamspear be the Selden guy, even though it says he's dead. I don't know. Just a thought. Well, he knows him some way. Maybe they were in prison together. I don't know. Let's continue. Let's go with the photograph. So this is the photograph I found. Looks reasonably recent to me. Oh, uh, Garadev. Yes, it would appear to have been taken on the street in the front of the house here. Who's that guy? Is that Shamspear? Obviously, that's Mr. Garadev. He, that guy kind of looks like that one, uh... That one juror we keep seeing. And the gentleman on the left is Mr. Garadev. The landlord, of course. But well, who's the young man on the right? Mr. Garadev's son, perhaps? Perhaps. You can take that print if you like. Really? Are you sure? We can presume, therefore, that the Yard already knows. The identity of the young fellow, that is. Ah. Is that true? He looks familiar, but maybe I'm bugging. Oh, well, it's too bad if we do. Unfortunately, for you lot, leaking information isn't one of my pastimes. Darn. My dear Inspector, if I may be so bold as to point something out. Pastimes are for one's leisure, but this is for work. <laughs> the answer is still no. All the more reason I'm not telling you. I did more failure. Again. Yes, I heard. <laughs> Photograph of print found in Mr. Shamspear's room. It shows the landlord and Mr. Garadev together with a young man. I wonder why a photograph like this was hidden under the floor. I mean, Mr. Shamspear himself isn't in it. Photographic prints are still rare treasures in the East End. I imagine Mr. Garrett was rather delighted to have been Im immortalized. He probably made a proud present of it. Intriguing. I see he's got paintbrushes, it looks like. Huh. Huh, okay. There's nobody we know that looks like that. It's you, no. I don't know. I mean, I mean, Shamfir is all like dolled up in like a wig and I guess makeup and stuff. Could that be him? Like younger? Mr. Garadev looks the same, but he's like an old man. Or 46 isn't that old. He, he looks older than he is. Um, Shamfir is 31. Maybe he's like in his 20s? I don't know. Because one, one of the... 
again, these are all just spitballing theories here. One of the things they had, because I saw a paint on him, like he was wearing a, a, an apron, or a, I don't know what you call it, like a fanny pack type thing with, there was like a paintbrushes and paper in it. I was like, <laughs> could it be olive green, maybe? Maybe it's a maybe it's a girl in the picture, and it was when she was thin. Maybe she was thin at one point. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, lastly, the tin box. Now, this tin box looks interesting, doesn't it? Might I suggest, Inspector, that you open it? If you were to find something inside that reveals the truth behind this case, I wouldn't be in the least surprised. Yeah, funnily enough, I've already had a look. It's completely empty. Oh, really? What? Sham spare? Give us a clue, man. He might have taken whatever was in it out. You didn't even have the chance to utter a word, Mr. Narahoto. But anyway, at least we found out what's inside the box. Kinda. Yes, thin air. It's empty, rather like how I feel inside. Is there nothing more to this box, then? I wonder. Did you try? Is there a string in there? Did you try pulling the string within the box? <laughs> or an embarrassing picture of Shamspear hidden away. Is that who I think it is? The only other cat I know of in this game? Meow! It's Waggy! What are you doing back there, buddy? Oh, look! It's that lovely little kitty cat! Oh, that's right, this is a... F I mean, I didn't forget that one a flashback, but yeah, obviously, this is before we actually, uh, took uh, Waggy in. What was its name? Ragahai. It's Mr. Natsume's, isn't it? I don't think we ever asked him, actually. Why don't we call it, um, Ragahai? You know, like Mr. Natsume refers to himself in Japanese. I wonder how he got in here. Clever cat. Oh, wonderful. Well then, Ragahai. Here's something delicious I bought for you from the cat's meat meat. Wait, what? The cat's meat man. <laughs> the cat's man meat, I almost said. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm too tired. It's late. <laughs> the big old man meat. Meow! Yum, 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 yum. It's good, isn't it, Mr. Kitty Cat? Or Miss. Is it a girl or a. Mrs. Kitty Cat? I don't know. He he. He couldn't be happier now, look. I just hope we can bring some happiness to his owner, too. You still down there, uh, Mr. Gregson? Okay, I guess we can. Can we examine, uh, wa little waggy high there? A little waggy? Nothing else, okay. Ah, uh, what a cutie. Meow! That was a cheeky little meow, Wagahai. Bad kitty. Oh, I can't stay mad at you. Oh, but he's so adorable. I could sit and watch him forever. I think he may not appreciate that after a while. And we have an investigation to get back to. As much as I'd love to play with the kitty. Okay, so I think... I don't know how much is left of the investigation. I know we still have to uh, see... Um, good old what's-his-face. Natsume himself. We have to go to the prison and talk to him. But we're approaching an hour and a half uh, about. So I think that was a good place to end the, uh, end the episode. So it was just, you know, more investigation as we expected. I feel like most of the action happened here in this room. Some of the other places we visited, I mean, we uh, not much was happening. Like uh, Briar Road and the Garadev, there was nothing going on. Oh yeah, we had uh, Shamfu was confronting uh, Miss Green about something. They were having a bit of a spat and argument. We saw we saw an interesting side of uh, of Shamspear kind of ooze out for a second, and then he regained his composure. So we know he's definitely hiding something. Hence, what we just discovered. And then after that, yeah, we went here and did a lot of investigating. We did that... I don't want to say that stupid mechanic, because, I mean, the mechanic is fine. In fact, there's been mechanics like it in the other game. It just... I don't know what was going on. I don't know if I was just 
scanning the wrong spot. It was just a random spot on the floor. Like, I couldn't see the uh, floorboard. Especially with the bluish tinge that was, you know, because we were wearing the goggles, but... I mean, you, you'll see... I'm sure you saw, like, I was just spraying like a madman. Even on the floor, so to think I just missed that exact spot is like... But whatever. I figured I got it in the end. But that's quite a find. I'm sure there's more to this picture thing. I don't know what. I mean, I do see this. And there are also handprints on this box I saw. So I don't know. Something in this area is intriguing. And we found a whole bunch of evidence, so... Like I said, in the next video we will talk to uh, Mr. Natsume. And hopefully there's more after that. Because if it ends there, then it's going to be a short episode. I might have to start the trial, maybe. It hasn't happened to me yet. I haven't had to, like... I haven't, like, finished it. Actually, I think it happened once. It happened once in the first game. But then the following chapter ended up being so short that I was able to get it all in anyway. It was during, I think it was during the uh, the second case. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so I'll leave it there. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course hit the notification bell so you know when more videos go up. And share the video and the channel with your friends, family, and loved ones. I appreciate you guys as always, and I'll see you next time. So take care, and bye bye